Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. <clears throat> we stand and welcome to our viewers who are viewing in on our Facebook live streaming platform. Glad to have you. Be in the midst of our service, and I want you to start our call of worship, which we already did. And uh, now we ask that you join in with us as we sing hymn number seventy-nine, one of the great hymns of the church. At last and did my Savior bleed and did my sorrow die. Lord, he devote that Savior's head and was such a firm as I. At the cross, at the cross, there I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9 and 10. 
in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 9. And it reads as follows. The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind to reward each person according to their conduct, according to what their deeds deserve. And then Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 9 simply says this do not be quickly provoked in your spirit for anger resides in the lap of fools here in the reading of our scripture lesson coming from Jeremiah chapter 17 verses 9 and 10 and Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 9 may God bless and edify both of these could you read his silver hearts. Amen. But we invite you to sing along with us as we sing hymn 211. The passion now with Jesus City. Who's in the middle? Leaning on the everlasting arms. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace of mind, leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning. Yes, that's secure from all alarms. Leave yes, leave all the everlasting arms. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way. Leave all the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path goes from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning, yes, leaning, thank you, Lord, to keep and secure from all along, leaning, yes, leaning, yes, leaning, all the everlasting arms. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. Would their blessed be yes, with my soul's will Leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning yes, Safe and secure from all alarm. Lean on Jesus, lean on Jesus. Lean on the everlasting arms. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We come now to the hour of prayer, the hour of exhortation the hour of praise as we go before the great and mighty God yes, one is able to do all things except to fail and we just want you Paul just for a moment to receive any prayer requests and praise reports from those here with us those who are reviewing we just said you go ahead and to 
you to speak out loud to yourself your prayer request as we take them all and leave them on the throne of God's grace. Of tender grace and mercy. Do we have any further questions this time? Thank you, Justin, at this time, we're praying for um, a speedy recovery and everything goes well, and he's able to be able to function again. Um, my children here, really, individually and collectively, especially because of her at this time, um, not that Michael does a really special prayer, but special things to we ask for prayer. Um, Lord, you know all about everything that goes on at the town family, but we just thank you for all the blessings. Continue to look at the Pastor Valley and my grandchildren. All those family members that are near me, that are, that are um, here in Philadelphia, my son has such a special prayer for all my relatives that are um, not doing well and um, just protect them and guide them wherever they have to go. The 200 block of Ashley Street, especially the corner manager, Lord, it seems like uh, the drug dealers have, I got them off the corner, but somehow. They have ventured inside the store, and I know that Mr. Gomez was a little bit nervous about them and what they were doing, but now they're taking over the store. So we just pray, Lord, that um, whatever needs to be done, that we'll be able to take care of that. Um, just, just everyone in the world, Lord, just look at them and ask for those special prayer. Thank you. Given God is glory and the sun gives you strength, thank you, Lord, for all of your blessings. Thank you for your continued blessing. Continue to bless all of my children, all of my grandchildren, all of their families, their God. Continue to bless the block, the 200 block of Ashley Street, this great church, everyone, everyone, everyone who has been able to make it their God. And dear God, continue to bless my employer, his family, and all of those families that he employed, dear God. <coughs> I ask a special blessing for the McLean family. To um, special blessing for Sam to make a decision on the type of medical need that his mother will continue to need to God. And I ask these things from Jesus Christ. Thank you. Let's let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we just Come, Lord, into your presence with deep humility. We come, Lord, into your presence with thanksgiving. We come into your presence with praise, Lord, just bringing forth from our hearts. We just come back in you, Lord, a just and mighty God. When it reigns supremely on the throne, it yet looks down for all of your people. Even though those times when we think that you have abandoned us, you're watching. Those times when the struggle becomes intense. Yes, sir. We might wonder where you are. You're watching. Those times when we feel let down. You're watching. We just thank you, Lord, because you're watching. Thank you. Because you are still blessing. That you're still doing those things Father, that we need to have done in our lives. 
and because we don't readily recognize it and thank you for it, we know that you are constantly involved in our lives. And we just thank you, Father, because many times we don't stand worthy. Many times we don't deserve what you bless us with. But you do it anyhow from your abundant grace and tender mercy that you have for each and one of us. That you count not robbery, you cast down your blessings upon each and every one of us, Father, as we stand in the need. And so, Father, we just thank you and praise you. Lord, we just lift you up even right now. Yes, Lord. As we endeavor, Lord, to move throughout this service, we just thank you, Lord, for your son Jesus, who gave it all that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And we thank you, Father, for your Holy Spirit, who leads guys and direct us down these mundane shores we call life. Father, we ask that you just be in the midst of our service today. Lord, that you manifest your presence here among us, Lord. That you would anoint this fresh and new from above the, with your Holy Spirit. Lord, that you would fill us from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet. Yeah. Lord, that we might feel the spirit within us, Lord, just tingling throughout our body, Lord. As we praise, as we sing, as we Lift prayers up to your holy and righteous name. Lord, as we just do everything to your glory and certainly to your honor. Bless us, Father. Bless our children here today. Bless all the households represented here. Bless our family members that are ill, shut in. Those who are not well. We know all about them, Father. We know where they are, each and every one of them, even right now. We need them certainly on your throne with any grace and mercy, knowing that you will do all things except to fail. Yes, so we commend, Father, our prayer requests unto you. We recognize, Father, that even before we could finish saying them, yes, yes. that you already have received them and you have already started the wheels of blessing and motion. So we thank you even right now for what you want to do in the midst of the lives of our families, our co-workers, employers, our neighbors, this entire neighborhood. We we'll leave them all on your throne to the grace and mercy and just humbly say, have your way. Bless Father, the remaining part of this service. Bless your word as it goes forth. Bless those that may still be on the way. And those that could not make it for reasons known only unto you. Will you adjust them when you're thrown as you recover from back surgery? You understand that all went well, but there's still need uh, healing, Lord, that needs to be done. There's still more observation that must be done, Lord, before he's released to go home. That the doctors may be assured that everything that they have done from the midst of that surgery has uh, taken hold and the healing process has really and truly begun. So bless Father, there's only a God that you was able and willing to do. And we always stand ready in your name, all praise, all honor, and all glory. Continue to bless like us as we make our footprint known in this community. God has asked me to continue to try to get a, a great understanding of our relationship with Daffodil as they try to get the, their own footprint in this community, they're all trying to help those who have loved ones who are in need of home health care. So bless us, strengthen us, keep us. Keep us all, Father, in your precious name, we can pray. Amen. Amen. We come to the time in the service where we all can take an active part 
as we give back unto God, as he has blessed us this past week. We ask ushers of the fair and self to come and receive our tithes and all of them. Remember that it's more blessed to give than to receive. things come of thee, O Lord. All things come of thee, O Lord. And of thine as he is of thee. Amen. Amen. of anger. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in, and then a little light from heaven filled my soul. Yeah. It bathed my heart in love, and wrote my name above. And just a little talk with Jesus made me whole. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our children. He will hear our faces cry. And he will answer by and by. Though we feel a little prayer will turn. And you know a little fire is burning. You will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Makes it right, yes. Sometimes my path is near without a real tear. I know I'm so not very hard to live. So in the midst of sin, we rise and hide the starry side. But gentle talk with Jesus makes it right. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our truth. He will hear our faintest cry. And he will answer by and by. Now when you feel a little prayer will turn. And you know the fire is burning. You will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. I may have doubts and fears. My eyes be filled with tears. But well, Jesus is a friend who watches day and night. Yes, he does. I go to him in prayer. He knows my every fear. And just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Yes. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our trouble. He will hear our faintest cry. And he will answer by and by. Now when you feel a little prayer will turn in. And you know a little fire is burning. You will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. 
Build all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry. And he will answer by and by. Down where yeah. you feel a little prayer will turn. And you know a little fire is burning. You will find a little talk with Jesus. Makes it right. Yes, thank you, Lord. Makes it right. Do not be quickly provoked in your spirit, for anger resides in the lap of fools. <clears throat> Uncovering the expressions or faces of anger. Uncovering the faces or expressions of anger lends itself to a deliberate attempt to look within and to root out something that will offend or hurt. And address it before, before it becomes problematic to those around us. Lighthouse, if you look around as we travel through life, you will see many people who knew who need to do exactly that. As they deliberately show that many faces or expression of anger with no concern for how it affects others. Human history has demonstrated time and Time again, the great need to look within. But mankind is determined not to do what it takes to ensure a lasting peace among themselves and among nations. And to truly show Christ's likeness required by a Savior who died on the cross for our sins. Our scripture lesson this morning speaks to us about a deceitful heart and anger that is so much a part of it. Jeremiah knew of this wickedness firsthand as he dealt with the nation of Israel. The people often caught in the grips of sin and disobedience. If you look at the history of the nation of Israel, you will see more often than not the raising, raging, excuse me, beasts within. Or that anger. The, their rage unabated no matter who God had in charge at that time. Even our Savior had to deal with it during his earthly ministry as he went from town to town trying to spread the gospel or the good news of salvation. Dealing with those that the Sanhedrin had enraged to the point of rioting. He also had to deal with this raging beast, even with his disciples. As we see in the incident with Peter, becoming angry, slice off, slicing off the ear of the high priest servant in the Garden of Gethsemane. So what we see in the Bible for the most part, in both the Old and New Testament, is outspoken anger. Anger that is released in spite of who might be on the receiving end. The vast or faces of anger have been around as long as mankind. But unlike the Israelites in the Old and New Testament, we have a more definitive knowledge of how anger is displayed. And as a result, we have no excuse not to rein in before it becomes a problem and spirals out of control. Well, we are spears who hold nothing back and do not care who we have been, or stuffers who hold anger in, causing health problems for themselves in the long run, or leakers who choose when or how or if they will release anger. Because they believe and feel that anger is not the proper thing to do. They are all faces of anger that we must understand and be ready to deal with. Which one of these masses or faces of anger describes you? And how are you deal with it in a constructive way? The Bible does not tell us that we cannot 
the aim. But what it does say is that we must control it at all times. If you are to stand righteous before God, and we cannot at all costs let the sun go down on unresolved anger. The faces of anger are there like us. The question is, will we choose to confront them? Will we choose to own up to them? Will we choose to make the right decisions in life? That those around us, that those that we love, may not be affected in a negative way by anger that we choose to go unchecked. Overcoming emotions that destroy, part two. Uncovering the expressions of anger. We want to pause for a moment now to allow for our Black History presentation at this time. And then we will close out our service for this morning. We ask that those who are still tuning in to stay with us for our Black History presentation. Good morning, everyone. African-American inventors. This is a story of a little boy named Theo who woke up one morning and asked his mother, Mom, what if there were no black people in the world? Well, his mother <laughs> thought about that for a moment and then said, son, follow me around today and let's just see what it would be like if there were no black people in the world. Now, so they got dressed and, were st and got started. Theo ran to his room to put on his clothes and shoes. His mother took one look at him and said, Theo, where are your shoes? And son, those clothes are all wrinkled. I must iron them. But when she reached for the ironing board, it was no longer there. You see, Sarah Boone, a black woman, invented the ironing board. And Jan E. Matzelner, a black man, invented the shoe, lasting machine. Oh, well, she said, please go and do something about your hair. Theo ran into his room to comb his hair, but the comb was not there. You see, Walter, Simon, a black man, invented the comb. Theo decided to just brush his hair, but the brush was gone. You see, Lydia O. Newman, a black female, invented the brush. Well, this was a sight, no shoes, wrinkled clothes, hair a mess. Even mom hair was a mess without the care of inventors of Madam C.J. Walker. Will, will, will you get this picture? Mom told Theo, let's do our chores around the house and then take a trip to the grocery store. Theo's job was to sweep the floor. He swept and swept and swept. When he reached for the dustpan, it was not there. You see, Lloyd P. Ray, a black man, invented the dustpan. So he swept his pile of dirt over into the corner and left it there. He then decided to mop the floor, but the mop was gone. Oh. You see, Thomas W. Swart, a black man, invented the mop. Theo yelled to his mom, Mom, I'm not having any luck. Well, son, she said, let me finish washing these clothes and we'll prepare a list for the grocery store. When the wash was finished, she went to place the clothes in the dryer, but it was not there. You see, George T. Simone, a black man, invented the clothes dryer. Mom asked Theo to get a pencil and some paper to prepare the list for the marker. So Theo ran to get the paper and pencil, but noticed the pencil lead was broken. Well, he was out of, the out of luck because John Love, a black man, invented the pencil sharpener. Mom reached for a pen, but it was not there because William Purvis, a black man, invented the fountain pen. As a matter of fact, Lee Burridge invented the typewriter machine, and W.A. Lovett 
the advanced printing press. <laughs> Theo and his mother decided to head out to the market. Well, then Theo opened the door. He noticed the grass was as high as he was tall. You see, John Burr, a black man, invented the lawnmower. They made their way over to the car and found that it just wouldn't go. You see, Richard Spice, a black man, invented the automated gear shift. And Joseph Gamble invented the supercharger system for international combustion engines. They also noticed that a few cars that were moving were running into each other and having wrecks because there was no traffic signal. You see, Garrett A. Morgan, a black man, invented the traffic light. Well, it was getting late, so they walked to the market, got their groceries, and returned home. Just when they were about to put away the milk, eggs, and butter, they noticed that the refrigerator was gone. You see, John Standard, a black man, invented the refrigerator. So they just left the food on the counter. By this time, Theo noticed he was getting mighty cold. Mom went to turn up the heat, and what do you know? Alice Parker, a black female, invented the heating furnace. Even in the summertime, they were out of luck because Frederick Jones, a black man, invented the air conditioner. It was almost time for Theo's father to arrive home. He usually took the bus, but there was no bus because its percussor was the electric trolley invented by another black man, Albert R. Robinson. He usually took the elevator from his <coughs> office on the 20th floor, but there was no elevator because Alexander Miles, a black man, invented the elevator. He also usually dropped off the office mail at a nearby, nearby mailbox, but it was no longer there because Philip Downing, a black man, invented the letter drop mailbox, and <coughs> William Berry invented the postmarking and canceling machine. Theo and his mother sat at the kitchen table with their head in their hands. When the father arrived, he asked, why are you sitting in the dark? Why? Because Lewis Howard Latimer, a black man, invented the filament within the light bulb. Theo quickly learned what it would be like if there were no black people in the world, not to mention if, if he were sick and needed blood. Charles Drew, a black scientist, found a way to preserve and store blood, which led to his starting the world's first blood bank. And what if a family member had to have heart surgery? This would not have been possible without Dr. Daniel Hale Williams, a black doctor who performed the first open heart surgery. So if you ever wonder, like Theo, where would we be without, without us? Well, it's pretty plain to see we would still be in the dark. Amen. Thank you. Amen. <coughs> we want to extend the invitation to Christ, to discipleship right now, and to say, we're to the and bring it to our viewers and to those here with us that God wants all of us to be a part of his family. He wants none to be exempt. And that said, those who have not received Christ in their lives, <clears throat> the invitation goes out to you now because you know where. Move right along towards the end times. And life is not guaranteed to us in at all. It never was. And we can no longer put things off. And don't say it goes off to tomorrow what we can do today. And so we just say to you, come now. God wants you to be a part of this family right now. So come. If you have not received Christ in your life. God stands, um, his arms open to receive you by way of baptism. We just want to say to those in between churches, you can see making lighthouse your church home. And those who may be tuning in, who have been away from church for a long time, who 
We were baptized at one time, but feel as though that you no longer have the faith that you used to have. But we just want you to know that the faith is still there. It's just buried deep within your spirit. And we just want you to know that God wants you to come back by way of rededication of the faith that you still have that, that don't realize that you do. But however you do it, we just say to you to come. And with that, we just want to uh, thank those who did you in today on our Facebook live streaming platform. And to say to you, we look for you to do it again on next week. A benediction. <clears throat> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and trust it. Amen. Amen. I dismiss and walk away to our